Hi, in this video I'd like to give you a brief little introduction to this course as well as to our first week assignment. So a little bit about myself. I'm a former English teacher. I taught high school in Central Florida. Primarily I was an English teacher, but then I moved on uh, to become a reading teacher and a reading specialist in Central Florida, Stanford, Florida, as well as Orlando. Uh, my PhD is from Clemson University, and I then went on to teach for four years at a HBCU called Harris Stowe State University. HBCU, of course, stands for Historically Black Colleges and Universities. And this is my fourth year at University of Arkansas Little Rock. I specialize especially in English education and reading, uh, which would be, of course, broad field liter literacy. So here are some things that we're going to focus on with this course. We're going to focus on lesson planning and you're going to have five lesson plans that you're going to do during this course. Um, so we'll understand how to design strong lessons that meet state standards. We'll focus on the implementation of good strong lesson plans. In other words, how do you implement your lessons consistent with being a reflective practitioner? We're going to learn about strong assessment methodologies in this class formative as well as summative assessment, multi-tiered systems of support, in other words, response intervention, and a little bit of universal design for learning. Universal design for learning basically means how do you uh, design your lessons and set up your instruction in ways that minimize the obstacles for learning uh, for diverse students, including students with special needs. Uh, we're going to learn about teaching in context of, of a PLC, Professional Learning Community. I won't spend that much time on PLCs. This really isn't a PLC-focused course, but the state and the district do uh, make it very, very clear, abundantly clear, that they want you to know how to operate in a PLC, so we will learn more about that. We'll study some about learning theories, theoretical frameworks for understanding um, how students learn, as well as research in that that uh, includes neuroscience, that includes um, frameworks for understanding um, cognition in the mind, that sort of thing, and how it can impact your instruction. And we'll especially focus a great deal on literacy, including uh, the science of reading um, and research and evidence-based approaches to understanding reading uh, that can inform your instruction. Now, some of you might actually find it surprising that we're going to be spending as much time as we are in this course, um, but we want to make sure that you're getting that in this, in this program that you're in. Uh, for some of you, this might be the first class that you've taken in which we spend a lot of time on literacy instruction. And so that part of it might be a little bit challenging for you, and I will go at a pace that I believe that you can handle, but I think it's absolutely imperative no matter what subject you teach, science, um, English language arts, math, um, even PE, potentially, it's absolutely imperative for you to know how to integrate research on literacy into your uh, lessons and into your instruction. We're going to use two textbooks in this course. Uh, one is very much focused on science of reading, uh, Perkins and Yates, and the other is more broadly about continuity reading instruction, in other words, how to integrate strong literacy instruction, reading and writing instruction into your continuity instruction, regardless of what subject that you're teaching. Uh, now, I understand that for the first week of class, you probably won't have your textbooks, so the first week does not um, depend on you having your texts, but these are in your bookstore. Um, hopefully, you're getting these in advance before the class starts, and you'll be okay. Here are some of the key dates. Um, I'm recording this video and posting this online for you well in advance, but um, August 22nd is when classes begin. Um, we've got Labor Day, September 5th, that really won't affect your course since this is my, uh, this is really an online course. November 20th through November 26th is your fall break. I will not have anything due during those dates. Final exams are December 7th through 13th. We do not have a traditional uh, final exam in this course, although I do have a final paper that is due, and this is when that's going to be due.
Um, December 15th is when grades are due at noon. Uh, please don't turn things in to me December 14th and expect uh, me to accept them. I'm, I'm not accepting late work, uh, but I do want you to be aware of my deadline. I don't want to be grading things on December 15th on the day that grades are due. So if you are in a situation where you're running late, perhaps there was an illness, that sort of thing, and you got an extension from me, uh, then please try to have things into me December 13th. That gives me time to grade everything. Late work will not be accepted without my permission. Now, I do uh, tend to be a little bit understanding, uh, more than a little bit generous in terms of being understanding if you've got a situation that comes up in your life. Um, or in sometimes you might just simply be feeling overwhelmed because life happens. Write to me in advance. Uh, let me know what's happening. Um, or let's say hypothetically an emergency came up um, on the, uh, during a particular week write to me, I will uh, probably be understanding. You can see we go on a 10 point grading scale. Please turn in all assignments on Blackboard by midnight of the due date. In other words, August 29th is when our first assignment is due, so that means it's due by midnight, August 29th. When something is due September 6th, that means it's due by midnight of September 6th. Um, we will have weekly meetings or close to weekly meetings in this class. Uh, right now I'm looking at probably uh, 6 p.m. on Thursdays is when I'm going to be scheduling our weekly meetings for, the, for this class. But I'm going to be in dialogue with you guys, try to find out from you what the best day is for you and what the best time is for you, and I'm flexible on that. I understand that, I, that you may not be able to meet um, every time that we meet online, but if you can uh, come in, that will be really, really good for you. Um, the way that I'm going to have our weekly meetings is that I'm going to post videos and video discussions uh, that go with each assignment. That way you, um, you don't have to show up to me on a weekly meeting that may be hard for you um, in terms of scheduling. Uh, and you don't have to sit around for me uh, lecturing you. I don't want to spend our live time just on a straight lecture. That's what my videos are for. Uh, but I want you to uh, think about what else would you like to talk about? What questions come to your mind? What aha moments come to your mind? And then when we have our weekly um, live meetings, synchronous meetings, that's when we can have hopefully a lively discussion that go beyond what's just simply in the videos. And I label, when it comes to turning in your assignments, I label everything by due August 29th, due, December, due September 6th. I try to be very careful in my labeling. You'll see on Blackboard where if it's a video that I'm posting, I label it as a video. If it's your reading assignment um, that I'm posting, I label it as your reading assignment. If it's the folder where I want you to turn in your assignment, I label that as due August 29th or due September 6th and that's where you turn in your assignment and you'll see uh, generally speaking I want you to turn in your assignments all in one uh, document in that folder that just simply makes it easier for me and I think easier for you and I will provide explicit directions for you about how to do that labeling for instance um, for your first week's assignment due August 29th um, it's divided into three sections. Uh, please uh, turn in all three sections on a single document. The first section is a basic introduction. And again, your, each weekly assignment is worth 100 points. So uh, this first week assignment is 100 points. And I give a rubric um, that walks you through how I'm grading. I'm all, I have also rec recorded a separate video for you that goes along with that rubric that will walk you through how I grade your weekly assignments. So for those of you that are wondering what do you mean by reflection, how are you grading, what are you taking off by, there's a separate video that I want you to watch. So section one, just simply introduce yourself. What's your major? What subjects areas do you want to teach? 
what are key things that you hope to learn in this course, and of course, just simply confirm that you've read the syllabus. Boom, that's your section one. Pretty easy. Um, that can be as simple as a paragraph, right? Section two, uh, typically I want this to be two paragraphs about um, what are key implications for instruction do you take away from the video that I've recorded. I have recorded already a video on uh, content area literacy um, issues that I want you to, um, to watch and that goes along with um, your course that you're studying. It's especially, um, I focus on content area literacy in the context of curriculum pedagogy and practice. Uh, I want you to look for aha moments, ways that you can connect this in very practical uh, ways uh, with implementation of instruction. Uh, you can also think about uh, things that you're learning, new terms, new concepts that you're learning, and that can be what you discuss in about two paragraphs in section two. And especially when we talk about more things that you want to learn about, you can make note about that in that section, but especially things you want to learn more about um, or questions you might have, carry that hopefully into our uh, meeting. I plan during our first week of class uh, to schedule a meeting 6 p.m. Thursday in all likelihood. So section three, in one to two paragraphs, what key implications for instruction do you take away from an article that I'm uh, posting by Louisa Motes, so reading is rocket science. Um, Louisa Motes is very influential um, and an organization that she largely runs called the Reading League is very influential on instruction that the state of Arkansas wants you to do. So that I chose that article uh, for a purpose that will help introduce you to the approach to instruction that we're going to focus on in this course and the approach to instruction that is consistent with what you'd find in, in Wise Arkansas training as well as in letters training if you were to take letters training that the state very much recommends and the approach to instruction that's consistent with the foundations of reading test. Um, those of you that are planning on being elementary teachers or exceptional education teachers need to take the foundations of reading test um, in order to be certified. Um, middle grades teachers don't need to do that. High school teachers don't need to do that. Uh, but at the same time, as we study concepts from the foundations of reading test, that's going to really help you in your overall instruction. So your weekly responses and your week one response is a type of weekly response graded under here. Um, these responses should synthesize your readings of an article with what you have either read in a chapter, obviously week one we're not reading out of a chapter, or an article, or watched in your videos that I uh, post for you. Uh, generally speaking, I'm going to post one to two videos per week uh, for you to watch in addition to our uh, live sessions that we're going to have. Sometimes more than two videos, rarely more than two, and never more than three. I want you to form a very cohesive, reflective paper about your implementation of concepts from content area literacy instruction into pedagogy and practice. By pedagogy, I mean um, your methods of teaching. Aim for about one to two pages. Um, on the shorter videos or on the shorter reflections like your week one, I'd be okay with one page for the first week um, of the response, but sometimes I, on other weeks I won't see where you can do this in less than two pages. I'm going to be very specific about that each week. I'm not going to do a week by week by week rundown in this introductory video. I'm going to be doing separate videos with expectations going over your assignments each week. We'll also have uh, periodic quizzes. Um, I'm going to have a quiz in this course about once every two weeks. Um, for those of you that have had me before, that's a little bit something new that I'm doing. I haven't always done quizzes. Now this being a course that is taught online, your quizzes are really meant to help you learn. 
I'm not going to do these as timed quizzes. I don't like doing that in an online type class. That's very difficult for you because, for instance, I don't know what's going on in your home. For all I know, you might start to do a quiz, then the time clock starts if I set it up in a timed way, and then all of a sudden something interrupts you, and then, uh-oh, you're in trouble. I don't know what's going on uh, in your home that might have interrupted you. I'm not a big fan of timed quizzes with online uh, because I can't control what's happening. So these quizzes are things that you'll be given in advance. You'll have a minimum of one week to work on this quiz. Um, and I'm going to go over the answers with you later. Um, and this is really meant to be something to focus your learning. It uh, will go hand in hand with your reflective responses for that week. It will go hand in hand with what you're reading and it'll typically go hand in hand with concepts from the foundations of reading test. We'll also have five lesson plans that we work on. Ideally, I want you, starting in about week three of the course, I want you to uh, be thinking ahead of time about what you're going to be doing in these five lesson plans. And they're going to be doing, done, due at the end of the course. Uh, so, uh, a little bit of a difference between these lesson plans for those of you that have taken me in another course, uh, because I'm some of you may have taken me another course, is that I want these lesson plans to very specifically focus on reading instruction, um, literacy instruction. So focus on whether it is uh, fluency or vocabulary comprehension. Uh, focus on one of those in the context of your um, pedagogy and practice that you're teaching in your specific content area. If you are planning on being a science teacher, make your lesson plans geared for science instruction in a science class, but you're also helping students to understand their readings in a science course or to understand vocab science vocabulary terms in the context of that course, for instance. If you're teaching math, then make sure that this is a math geared lesson but uh, you can also focus on how are you help, helping students understand their readings in math, their word problems, for instance, in math. Um, or you can focus on how are you making sure that uh, students understand the math vocabulary um, in, the, um, in functional ways uh, in the context of your math instruction. So hopefully you get the idea. Uh, same thing goes for social studies. There is very specific uh, social studies uh, vocabulary and terminology that students need to know. So for instance, in social studies, if you're teaching about um, the Reformation or Civil War or World War I or whatever, um, then what vocabulary? How are you helping students to learn that content area vocabulary, for instance, in the context of your social studies unit? So again, to be clear, you are making lesson plans based upon the subject area that you're teaching, but you're also integrating that with literacy instruction. Generally speaking, for those of you that are planning on being middle school teachers, um, because, because most of you are likely planning on being middle school teachers. You would want to focus on vocabulary or comprehension um, for your, um, as an aspect of your lesson plans. Many of your students, not all, but many of your students, hopefully, will be fluent readers when you're a real world um, classroom teacher. Uh, to be a fluent reader means to read with appropriate pace and tone. Um, a disfluent reader would stop on uh, the a stop on words or stop on word parts and really struggle to pronounce them. Um, so, if a, fluency is something that struggling readers in the middle grades and sometimes high school might have difficulty with, and so if you've got students that are really struggling with fluency then you would want to work on that. But I don't, for your lesson plans, I don't recommend you doing fluency lesson plans unless you're planning on being a specific reading teacher. Um, same thing for phonics and phonemic awareness. If you're, uh, if you're, I will permit a phonics based lesson plan uh, if you're planning on being an elementary teacher or an early childhood teacher, but generally speaking in the middle grades, it would be uncommon 
unless you're dealing with exceptional education. It would be uncommon at the middle grades uh, for your students to have, any, to have deep problems with phonics and phonemic awareness. With your lesson plans, I'm also going to have an assessment uh, portion of that where we're going to learn about formative as well as summative assessments and make sure that your objectives and your goals for your lessons can be assessed and so that your objectives are tied to your assessments and uh, describe how you are um, monitoring and measuring student learning and um, setting up the, uh, the context so that you can adjust your next lesson plan based upon what you learn from assessment. We'll go over all of that in a separate video and separate discussions we're going to have and the rubric is posted on your syllabus. We also have a final paper that's due at the end of the class. Uh, the paper is posted on your syllabus. We'll go over that in separate discussions. Uh, the paper is basically a self-analysis and a critique. Uh, the paper has um, been, been provided in advance for you, and I'll discuss the paper in, uh, in a separate video for you, and we'll, and we'll have separate live discussions in which, in which we discuss that as well. And finally, um, you're found, we are going to take the Foundations Reading Practice Test. Now, I do not expect you to pass the test, <laughs> uh, to be clear. You're going to probably struggle on the test um, because this is your first time encountering this material. That's okay. This is pass-fail. I want you to just simply take it as a practice test um, and you do not have to tell me your score on the test. If you're embarrassed by it, that's okay. If it's something that's scary to you, that's okay. Just simply write me a one-page brief analysis of what your strengths and weaknesses in the performance and um, how you may plan to improve in your knowledge of reading. Uh, but that's that's all I want you to do. It's a pass-fail thing. This does not have to be anything that scares you. I just simply want you to take this as a way of familiarizing yourself with key concepts that you're expected to know. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what the course is. Again, I do want you to please meet with me um, this week uh, when we have that live session. Hopefully you'll be able to make that live session. And take care of yourselves. Hopefully you enjoy it.